Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is the 1st of November, so this is a new monthly vlog. I am currently finishing reading uh, The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman. I don't know if you can see. There we go. This is the cover without the jacket. It's so pretty and it also has this on it, which I really love. It's so cute. And I am more than halfway through. I'm on page 250 and so far I am loving it and I just don't want to stop reading it. I pretty much, I read a lot yesterday, technically still in the month of October, but I had already finished filming my monthly vlog for the month of October. So I don't know whether you know about the first book, which is the Thursday Murder Club basically follows a bunch of retired old people that live in a retirement village um, in somewhere in England and they are all fascinated with crime, especially true crime and cold cases and at some point an actual murder happens on their doorstep and they decide to try and solve it and it's hilarious, I love the writing style, it's very cosy murder style so there's not that much blood or anything scary, it's not really like a thriller um, but it's super fun and I love all the characters, like you grow really attached to them by the end of the first book. But the first book had a little bit of a lull in the middle and it was a little bit slow at times, so I do feel like this one is better. I actually think that this one is an improvement on the first book. And I think I rated the first book four stars, so this might end up being a five stars if it goes on, because so far, halfway through, I would rate it five stars right now. I've also started listening to the audiobook of How to Solve a Murder and this is for another themed video that will come out at some point so I'm not going to really talk about it but I will let you know my progress on it but basically I'm going to do a video on true crime non-fiction books uh, so I'm just going to read three or four I think and I read one last month which was I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara and this month I'm going to be listening to How to Solve a Murder which is about forensic science and it's by two people who work uh, at Guy's Hospital in London um, and are top of their field in forensic science so I'm quite excited to learn more about it. I hope it's not going to be too technical though but I think it is a short book because it's only a seven hour listen or eight hour listen so it should be fine. Next on the agenda for today is the fact that I've received this big Amazon package and I think there's four books in there so let's do a little bit of unboxing. God this is so much harder to do. There we go. Yeah, it's four books. Okay. Okay, so the first one is Into the Drowning Deep, which I did pick as part of my TBR for this month, so I need to read this month. And this is a horror fantasy novel that has killing mermaids in it. So I'm excited for this. Then I have Nothing But Blackened Teeth. This is super short. It's a novella. I think it's... How many pages is it? It's 115 or so pages. And this is a horror short novel. I think there's a bride who's obsessed with haunted places and wants to go and have like a viewing or something of a haunted place in Japan uh, where she is thinking she might have her wedding. So she stays there with her friends and obviously it's actually haunted. So bad things happen. Then I got the second book, uh, of this collection by Shannon McGuire. The first one was Every Heart a Doorway. Every Door a Heart Way? Every Heart a Doorway. I had it right the first time, sorry. This is the second one in this. This is fantasy. Uh, it's also short uh, novella style. And basically this is about children who have gone to other worlds, think Alice in Wonderland and things like that. And basically have returned and don't know what to do with themselves because they don't want to go back to the normal world. And all they desire is to go back to this other universe and they go to this boarding school where they're being taken care of by this headmistress who herself lived through the same thing. So this is really cool. And then finally, <gasps> Iron Widow, look at this. I actually can't really tell if this is sci-fi or fantasy. I think it's sci-fi. Yes, it's definitely sci-fi because I see something about a pilot. So this is sci-fi, uh, but fantasy style sci-fi, I think. And this is described as the Handmaid's Tale meets Pacific Rim in this dazzling blend of Chinese history and mecha science fiction. 
So this looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. I also keep seeing TikToks by the author of this book and that's really what sold me the book. It's like her TikToks. She seems like a hilarious person and every time she's talked about her book it sounds so exciting and fun. So it's really just her TikToks that have made me want to buy this book. I finished last night reading the Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman and I absolutely loved it and as I predicted when I was halfway through I was thinking this is a five star for me and I finished it and it was still a five star for me so this is how many stars I've given it. It's five stars. I adored this book. I think what made me love it so much is that I wanted to hug all the characters like all the time. I was just like this there's no way this character is not a real person. At some point, I think we're talking about Joyce who creates an Instagram account for the first time and the way she talks about it and describes her discovery of it and everything. I was just like, oh my god, I just want to hug Joyce. How is she not real? How is that person not real? Like everything felt so real. It didn't feel like I was reading about fictional characters. That's the crazy part. So to me, this is a huge improvement on the first book and I felt like the first book was really fun, really enjoyed myself. I think I rated it four stars but this is this is perfection. This was perfection. I can't think of a single thing that I thought ooh that could bring it down or it's a five star but I need to warn people that maybe they want like this or this or that. No, to me this was perfection. There's nothing wrong with this book and I don't know how else to explain my love for this book except that by the end of it I was like when's the next one coming? And I checked with a friend who had just finished it as well. We looked online and it's coming in a year. It is coming in September 2022 and that was the saddest discovery ever. I was like why can't it be sooner? But I guess fair enough, it makes sense. You need time to produce a book, to publish it. So at the same time, I started reading Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. Uh, I'm only like 40 pages in just because I have it on my Kindle as well. This is a very floppy book. I quite like this. Um, I own it on my Kindle, on my phone, and I think yesterday I had to do some traveling for work. And while I was traveling, it was like an hour long commute. And when I was on my commute, I started reading it. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far just because it's quite dark and a little bit gruesome but just spooky enough and I'm really enjoying the vibes. I don't know yet uh, much else about what's going on apart from the original synopsis of the book which is basically killer mermaids. It starts with a company that sends a team to film a mockumentary about mermaids in the Marianas Trench and they never come back. What does come back is footage of a horrifying scene of everyone dying and being killed by killer mermaids and then Years later, I can't remember how many years exactly, but like a few years later, one of the victim's sister, who is studying to become, I think, a marine biologist or something like that, uh, she wants to investigate. And I think she's gonna be on a new crew that's gonna go and investigate what happened. I'm expecting this to be a little bit like a slasher, a little bit like when I read uh, clown in a cornfield and stuff like that so I think a lot of people are gonna die so I'm hoping that I'm not gonna get too attached to a lot of the characters because I have a feeling a lot of them will not survive this. It is now Friday the 5th and I have made good progress in Into the Drowning Deep. I am now a bit over halfway through. I'm page 274. In this edition there is 480 pages I think so so I don't have that much left to read. I'm quite happy with it. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. This is grim and spooky and horror-like in just the right ways. Uh, there's a lot about, you know, humanity's responsibilities towards nature type of questions as well. I appreciate the balance, but frankly, I'm here for the horror. I'm here for the mermaids or killers and their awful monsters type of vibes, not the we are humans who have been doing bad things to the oceans and they're kind of right to do this type of thing. Like, I don't care about that, but it's just the right balance, so it's all right. Also, I did not realize this, but this was written by Shannon McGuire and this is just her other name for, I think, her horror books. I think she's got... I think she's got quite a few horror books under her belt now, uh, under that name Mara Grant, but it is Shannon Maguire and I had no clue whatsoever. And I didn't even know when I started reading it because the only Shannon Maguire book I have read so far is actually the novella that she's written, like the first one in her series of novellas, which is 
every heart or doorway and it's completely different writing style it's it's like it's just not even comparable so I had no way to understand that this was written by the same woman which I kind of love I feel like that really says a lot about her versatility as an author so I appreciate that but yeah so far I'm truly enjoying this um, and also it's really gripping like there was a moment when I was actually in a scene that you could tell that the horror and like the the scary aspect was like building up and I was so invested in it like it really makes you feel invested in those types of scenes and my partner at some point like talked to me during that scene suddenly and I was like what and just got scared just because it was so sudden within and I was just so plunged I felt like I was watching a movie and immersed in it so well written definitely um and I'm definitely rooting for some characters to survive now while at the beginning I was like I feel like it's gonna be more like slasher like and a lot of people are gonna die I still think a lot of people are gonna die but they introduced so many more characters since then that I'm like okay and there's already quite a few that have died Died. Um, so I'm not too worried about some of the characters that I'm hoping are gonna stay alive. I feel like we'll we will have a few survivors at least. I've also made some progress with the audiobook of How to Solve a Murder. I'm not gonna talk too much about it because this will be for another video but I am enjoying it a little bit more now. Um, we have a dual POV type of storytelling. This is obviously non-fiction but it is written by a couple. I actually enjoy the POV and the storytelling style and everything, the writing style, I guess, of the woman personally. So I am enjoying myself more now because we're in her parts right now. So maybe that's why the beginning was a little bit more dry to me because I just wasn't vibing as much with the husband. But that's it. Today is Sunday 7th of November. I've just made myself a coffee. I've just had a little chat with my family. Now I'm ready to, I believe, finish reading Into the Drowning Deep. I only have like less than 100 pages left because I read quite a bit yesterday. Uh, yesterday had a game of Dungeons and Dragons and then afterwards read quite a bit. And I don't know, it was, I was getting really intrigued and it's like, it's the peak towards the end, you know, that all the action is now. But I was really, really tired and it was like half past midnight. I was like, no, I need to go to bed. So I didn't finish it, but I'm going to finish it today. Um, I'm going to do some editing as well because I need to edit last month's vlog video. And probably that's about it for my day, really. I'm probably going to watch some TV shows. <laughs> I'm back and I've now finished reading Into the Drowning Deep by Mary Grant. Really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the ending. Uh, I thought the last bit, the last few hundred pages were so intense with the action and the thrilling and the chilling. It was really, really well written. Loved, 
the horror aspect of it. I thought it was a really well-written horror book. And that's rare because I feel like usually I don't find horror books that scary. But this was like bone chilling in a way that it really gripped you while you were reading a scene and you really felt like you were watching like a movie of this happening and yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, the only complaint I have is that Mirigrant, which is Shannon McGuire, whoever, whatever, uh, kept using the sentence, the lovely ladies of the sea, and it was just so annoying because it kept happening non-stop and I would really notice it. I would really notice the repetition. So that's the one thing that kind of annoyed me. It was just, there's a few sentences like that that she would repeat quite often and felt like they hadn't been edited properly, like an editor should have noticed that and said like, can we like skip a few of them because you've used like a hundred of them. I may pick up Nothing But Black and Teeth next because I kind of want to finish another book this weekend because I'm not adventuring that fast in my TBR and afterwards I still have all of these books to read, so I still have four decently sized books. Um, so that's why I'm like, if I finish this one then at least that's one more that I've knocked off my TBR list for this month. It's still Sunday 12th, it is now 5 o'clock, I think it's uh, 5.24 and I have now just finished reading Nothing But Black and Teeth. Um, this is a one star for me, I feel a bit bad saying it because it's between one and two stars really, but I did not enjoy this, like I really, I really didn't like it at all. I kind of thought I would because I was thinking horror and it's short and very often whenever I read novellas I feel like they're so well written because I'm so impressed with the fact that authors have packed into only 100 or 200 pages this amount of a, like of information to give yourself like a proper story and this did not really do that it was it was a proper story in the sense of we had a beginning and an end but that's where it stops like everything else did not like. Um, I don't really know whether I said what this is about but it is a group of 20-somethings who used to be friends and there's amongst them a couple that is going to get married and the bride is obsessed with haunted houses and so as like a wedding gift one of the guys offers everyone a trip to Japan uh, because he's really rich and so they all get flown over to Japan to this huge mansion that is supposedly haunted and it's meant to be haunted by the bride of a groom who died on his way to see her to get married with her and because she was so devastated by it she said that she should be buried alive inside the, the foundations of the house because she said that she would wait for him whatever happened so that's what she does she waits for him by getting buried alive and then every year since then a girl has died in the house as well been buried alive the same way or something that's all that's all i know the thing is, it does have ghosts, it does have supernatural and horror and everything. I kept wondering though if everyone was just drugged and like imagining it because it, it was so weird. And I think the problem I have with this book and the reason why it didn't scare me whatsoever at all and I was like, I'm kind of bored of this and nothing is scary, is probably the writing style. It's constantly using metaphors and similes in a way that you don't know what's going on because you're trying to pick at the sentence to figure out what it does actually mean because you're like okay here's the metaphor so this means that and this is what's going on but when you want horror you want facts you want to know exactly what's going on i think the reason why i loved into the Drowning Deep so much is when there's a description of the mermaids killing someone, there's no faff around it. It's like it's gruesome and it's there and you know exactly what's going on and you're chilled by it. This was just super confusing. I was like, what's going on? Oh, there's blood. Okay. I wasn't too sure because the way it was described didn't sound like there was blood, but then it became clear afterwards. Super fucking weird. Just not my thing. And it did another thing that bothered me as much in this book as it did in Into the Drowning Deep so much repetition. In this book in particular uh, we have one of the characters, Philip, who is the rich guy who invited everyone, who flew everyone over to Japan to this haunted uh, mansion and he is described as being this golden boy who everyone always loves and he's always the center of attention and I think he's the only white guy in the group and like he's constantly described as being like oh you're the white, the rich white guy, typical of that stereotype. But it's repeated every single time 
he does anything at all. Like, he will say something, and the main character, who we have the POV of, turns to him and goes like, Oh, Philip, the golden boy says this. Oh, Philip, the golden boy does this. I'm, I'm exaggerating in the way that I'm making it sound less bad, because I'm only saying the golden boy, but it's like a whole fucking paragraph. Every single time she describes him doing or saying anything. And I was just like, oh my god, shut the fuck up and let him do the thing so that we know what's going on. And yet we didn't know what was going on because it's all metaphors and similes. So really, really hard to understand. I'm trying to figure out what I want to read next. And I think I'm going to continue with The Hunting Wives uh, about makeup. The reason why is I also have this one on my Kindle, which is on my phone. And at the moment, uh, I'm reading a little bit more while I'm commuting to the office whenever I have to go in, which is more often than before. So this is a good book for me to continue my TBR with because that way I can both read it when I'm at home and when I'm on the go and hopefully make good progress with my TBR. Today is Monday the 8th of November and I have started The Hunting Wives last night so I'm about 100 pages in right now and I don't like the main character but I am intrigued enough and I like the writing style enough that I want to continue reading. So basically we are following our main character whose name is Sophie. Yeah, she barely says it so I kind of keep forgetting it because the character that she's the most interested in is Margot. So I know Margot's name by heart but Sophie I keep forgetting. So basically Sophie uh, just moved back from Chicago after being in a really busy magazine uh, job. I can't remember what she does, if she's an editor or something. But she used to work in a lifestyle magazine in Chicago and she moved with her family, her husband and her son, uh, to I guess a small town somewhere in Texas and she knows this woman called Margot. Margot Banks is the wife to a really really rich dude and she's kind of this socialite type of woman, very uh, fancy looking and very attractive and very rich and I don't know how else to explain it but basically our main character becomes obsessed with her, like absolutely obsessed with her. Uh, she really wants to become part of her group of friends and go to the wine nights that they're going to and everything and at some point she manages to uh, when she stumbles upon her at one of her house parties and she's invited to join this group of girls, including Margot, led by Margot, called the Hunting Wives, because they have this secret meeting on Fridays where they go hunting, uh, which is partially they shoot uh, target and practice shooting, and then afterwards they go to bars where they hunt for men, in the sense that they basically want to have a little bit of fun without actually going all the way and completely cheating on their husbands, but they're kind of cheating on their husbands, pretty much. It's only 100 pages in and that's all that's happened, but there's also hints of in the future some young girl has died, and I know this from the synopsis as well, but I don't know yet who or why or how or anything like that. I can tell you, however, that I don't like the main character. She's super fucking annoying. On the one hand, she's very... she sees herself as, I think, this woman who's decided to slow down her life because she wants to spend more time with her child and stuff and with her family but she tells you stories about how she almost cheated on her husband and stuff like that several times it sounds like it like she's got this problem with love because her mother never really loved her I don't whatever and also her obsession with Margot is very unhealthy and you can tell that she's desperate when Margot doesn't answer one of her texts back at some point and before she even manages to join the group she seems a little bit like a stalking psycho herself because in order to join the group she's like stalking Margot on all her social media for months and then finally she requests a friend request on Facebook or whatever gets it and then at some point she sees in Erin's kitchen that she's got like an invitation to the party at Margot's house because she's into volunteering and stuff and so she like kind of almost gets herself invited in order to meet Margot and finally become part of this group of ladies. So it's just really weird and I don't like her and the part that annoys me the most is that she's decided that since she's slowed down her life and that she's not in doing her job as a lifestyle magazine editor or whatever she was doing, she's now doing social media posts instead on Facebook and, all, and on Instagram and she keeps hashtagging all the time and it's just really annoying. Like she's literally in her garden and it says here when I'm nearly level with the ground, I snap a few pics of the freshly watered basil and compose an Instagram post. Hashtag basil, hashtag garden life, hashtag turning basil into pesto. 
girl, you're so annoying and I would not follow you on social media. I don't know, it just... It's the most boomer thing ever as well, which she's meant to be 35, I think, in this book and 35 year olds are millennials. Like, they don't create posts like that. So that's my progress so far with this. I've also made some progress with the audiobook of How to Solve a Murder. I'm 122 pages into it. This is for another vlog, so I'm not gonna talk that much about it. And then I actually decided to start June, uh, but this is a no pressure reading speed. Uh, I'm only page 34 into this version of the book, which is uh, 688 pages. Basically, I'm listening to the audiobook at the same time as I'm reading, and I also got it on my Kindle. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is read until halfway through the book because that's where the first movie ends and I just want to make sure that I've read the book before I see the movie. Okay, so I haven't made much progress whatsoever in The Hunting Wives. Uh, I'm only giving a small update because I've read like a couple more chapters, not even, and I'm even more annoyed at the main character and I'm starting to think that Every single time I read something from a POV, which is the entire book, I'm annoyed at her and I hate her and I kind of don't really care what's gonna happen to her. And there hasn't been a single murder yet, which is making me think this is turning into a psychological thriller rather than a plain old thriller. And I don't like psychological thrillers because they're slow and not my thing and all the characters are unlikable and the narrator usually is very unlikable. This is it! This is exactly what a psychological thriller is like. I don't want to read a psychological thriller. So I'm giving it until halfway through. So this book is 350-ish pages. So I'm gonna give it to 150, 180 pages. And if I still don't like it, if no one's dead yet, then I will drop it because I'm just, I'm bored. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it until 180 pages. So I still have this bit to read. 80 pages more and if I still don't like it if no one's dead yet then I'm gonna drop it and I'm gonna DNF it which makes me really sad because I kind of feel like I did this exact same thing with the sanatorium where I hyped it up in my head partially because of the cover like the cover looked so good and I was like this is the type of thriller I'm gonna love and I have the same thing with the hunting wives where I love the cover and it's giving me all the vibes that I'm expecting from a great thriller and then I read it and I'm like no I don't like it and it's also this idea that the premise is great but the execution is just not my style so today is Thursday the 11th of November and I have just finished The Hunting Wives by Makeup. It is currently 10, 20 p.m. So I actually just finished this like 20 minutes ago, then took a quick shower. And now I'm here talking to you about it. And I have notes because basically uh, I realized I was almost going to DNF this book. I wasn't sure I was gonna finish it. And while I was deciding whether I wanted to DNF it or not, I started taking notes of all the things that were annoying me while I was reading it. And <laughs> there's quite a lot. <laughs> So I ended up reaching this 1.5 stars. I rounded it up to two on Goodreads just because I thought the ending was decent. It was eventful enough. Um, there was enough action and twists and turns that I was slightly more intrigued than through the rest of the book. And I guess it started happening. Everything started happening from the moment we do find an actual dead body, which was page 214. This book is this book is 350 pages, so this is almost 100 pages from the end. And yeah, that was too slow for me. I just wanted this to have more action at the beginning and a little bit more of a thriller vibe rather than a psychological thriller vibe. Now, our main character, Sophie, everyone seems to be like, yeah, come and hang out with us. We're gonna be your friends after meeting her for two seconds. When like, she is actually so boring when she talks to anyone. There's pages and pages where she doesn't say anything and there's no dialogue. It's just another person talking to her and then we have her thoughts about it. And it actually, it made me laugh because it made me think. This TikTok I watched of someone who was explaining how in the series You, who's, which is based on the book You, um, there's like so many inner monologues of the main character who's saying, you do this and you do that and blah, 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 that 
when you actually show the series without his inner monologue, it's super fucking cringe and awkward because it's just him standing there and not answering anything for five seconds and then saying one word. And like, that's literally how this book was. It was, it looked like that. It seemed to me like that. Like this entire time the main character had nothing interesting to say. She would say these super quick one sentence things every now and then. And I was like, why do people want to hang out with you? There's 20 pages during which the only thing she says is yum, so good about wine. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's the only thing you can actually utter is that yum, so good when asked about wine. And yeah, she's a complete alcoholic. Like she drinks every single page in this book. There's not a single page without the main character drinking. She, at some point, the only answer she has to group text that everyone is answering full sentences to is a thumbs up emoji. And I was like, wow, she's even boring by text messages. And then later on, there's another one of the women uh, that sends back a thumbs up because of another text. A thumbs up from Kelly. I can feel her haughtiness, even through a simple emoji. Girl, you just did that. You just did the exact same thing. Like, are you kidding me? She feels to me like this adult version of that trope we all hate in YA novels, where the girl's like, I'm really not that pretty. I'm kind of plain looking, but then everyone hits on her. And this is the case in this book. Like for some reason, every single person in the fucking world wants to hit on Sophie. At some point she says, she's talking about this girl in university that she had a thing with, which was her only experimentation with women. Uh, and when she talks about it, it sounds like that girl, everyone thought she was so hot and everyone wanted to be with her, but somehow the girl was interested in Sophie and ended up sleeping with her. And you're like, right, but you said at the beginning that you think you're not that pretty. So this is really confusing. Um, she cancels dinner with her friend Erin, who's such a good friend to her. Like everyone is good to her and she doesn't deserve any of them. And at some point she cancels dinner because the hunting wives have invited her back and she hadn't expected to be invited back, but she is. So now she cancels last minute on her restaurant without telling her why. And I'm like, you could, you could just make it Saturday. Like you don't, you, it doesn't have to be Friday. Like why does it always have to be Friday? You can't, there are other days in the week and we're reminded nonstop of how boring her life is. She's a stay at home mom, how boring this small town is. There's nothing to do ever. If there's nothing to do, that means you have time and other days of the week that you can go out during. So why aren't you telling your friend, hey, I can't do Friday anymore, let's do Saturday. And that way you've not really canceled and we're not realizing how much of a shitty friend you are. She keeps on blaming Margo and her hold over her instead of just owning up to her own actions. Like, honey, this is the consequences of your actions. You've done this to yourself. Own up to your mistakes. But she doesn't. She keeps on saying like, oh, these, these girls are so crazy. They're like mental. And Margo has such a hold on me. I need to, sh I need to shrug off her hold because I can't control myself when I'm with her. It's like, Girl, you're 35, you can control yourself. You're an adult. You don't need to blame others for your decisions. My last thought on it that I wrote is that I thought it was really obvious who did it and I was right about it as well. So it's not even that good of a mystery. Maybe I'm wrong with that one. Like I think some people did enjoy the mystery part of it and you know, who ended up killing the girl and all that. But I thought it was obvious. Like I didn't really, the twists were good in the sense that they made me doubt myself during the twists. And then when we reached the final twist and discovered who it was, I was like, yeah, I knew who that was going to, going to be. So yeah, but that's about it. That's the only good thing about this book was that there were some twists toward the end and there was a little bit of action. <laughs> I also can't really guarantee that I'm going to read a good book next because I mean, nothing but Black and Teeth was so disappointing. And then The Hunting Wives was so disappointing. So now I don't trust myself anymore to choose the right books just in this instance. So I think I'm going to pick so I think I'm going to be picking Rogue Protocol next because um, just to finish the, the week off with something that I'm going to enjoy truly and I know I'm going to enjoy because I've loved the first one and the second one in the series and these are novellas so it's super short and it's about this AI entity that is a security unit and has overridden all its protocol so it can do whatever it wants. It doesn't have to obey human orders anymore. And it kind of is this awkward, cringy personality who doesn't want to have to deal with people and just wants to watch TV shows on its own time and that's it. So very relatable, very fun. Lots of action and stuff like that in the books as well. So really enjoyable and fast to read. And I'm always so impressed when I read them because it's a full on story packed within one very short book. So I feel like if I pick this one, it's like, 
a safe value. Like I can pick this one and I know I'm gonna enjoy myself. Even if it's not a five stars, it will for sure be a four, a four stars at least for me. And I need this right now. So I'm gonna cheat my TBR a little bit and include this book in the middle. And then we'll see how much time I have for all the other three books. It is Saturday the 13th of November and I just wanted to give you a very quick update because last night I finished reading Road Protocol, uh, which is a novella, so it was very short and very easy to go through. But also, it's such a comfort read in a way because when I start any book in this series, I'm like, oh, I love it already. I know I'm going to love it because I'm back in the POV of, I gotta say, my favorite character ever. Like, I have to say that this AI... This sec unit that calls itself Murderbot is just the most brilliant character POV to be in ever. But as usual, this is a five stars. Uh, I enjoyed myself so much and I'm so happy because it feels a little bit like a palette cleanser in a way. After two books that had characters I hated to go back to my favorite POV ever. Um, the only thing is I've got one more and then I'm out of books from the series, but I do think that there's more in the series. I've now finished reading How to Solve a Murder by Derek and Pauline Tremaine, uh, mostly listening to the audiobook and then kind of reading sometimes at the same time, which does help whenever there's more scientific babble and things like that, but also just in terms of whenever it's uh, Derek's narrator, because it's not the actual uh, people who narrated the book, but whoever they hired to play his role, I guess, in the narration. Whenever it was him, I was a little bit more bored than whenever I was the woman. So I found it hard to follow and uh, continuously pay attention. So it was good to have kind of both because it just helped. Um, I ended up rating it 2.5, rounded it up to three stars. It was kind of average. The stories were a little bit anecdotal and kind of didn't have a proper direction. It didn't feel like it had enough cohesion and a storyline that it was following. It felt a little bit like it was just, then that thing happened to us and then we did that thing and then this thing. And it's kind of a summary of their life until they got together in a business, I guess, and formed a business together to do 3D mapping, uh, which helps doing things like uh, figuring out the trajectory of a bullet wound, things like that. Very interesting things that I just didn't think formed a novel. It does leave me with three books that I still need to read officially as part of my TBR for this month and I was actually going to start with Rules for Vanishing. Um, I also am currently still listening to the audiobook slash reading Dune and, and I still have to sleep in a sea of stars that I've been reading for the past few months. Every now and then I plunge back into it because I do have it on my Kindle which is on my phone so it makes it easy whenever I'm in a big commute or like waiting in the chair at the hairdresser and spending hours getting my hair done. So all of these things mean that I get to continuously read this book, but I do want to read it before the end of the year. So I may try and read a little bit more this month. So these are the things I guess to look forward in the next reading vlog, because I'm going to end this vlog here. I feel like this is a good two weeks and it's actually quite a lot of footage because I did read a lot more than I expected to already. So I feel like this is a perfect moment to stop. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, I would love it if you left a like, maybe a comment. I always try to respond if you have any questions, suggestions, anything like that. And if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, ring that bell, all that jazz. And we'll see you guys in the next one.